Hi everybody, it's Jackie schomburg Minen. And do you guys have way too much collage paper hanging around? <laughs> because I do. This is my pile of, I don't even know what to call it. It's lots of jelly printing. Lots of it is like second and third prints that aren't super strong. There are some cool prints mixed in here that I've lost at some point uh, because they got absorbed into this pile. This is like a ream of paper. It's a ridiculous amount of paper. And I took it out today thinking I would pick some favorites and work on just a, a collage with my paper. So I would encourage you guys to, to take your paper out every once in a while, go through it. You can see I have some blank pieces of paper in there somehow, um, some kind of failed doodle art projects, just a whole bunch of stuff, but mostly it's just gel printed paper and where I've, you know, put my, my brayer, where I've wiped my brayer down after the uh, gel printing. So I'm going through all these. I don't remember what my piles were, but I had some order as I was going through this. The bottom right pile was the pile of papers I'm trying to keep. And you'll see as I go, I continue to just rearrange different piles. So all the other piles I'm now combining to the left and cleaning up my paper. I kept that one magazine cover because I thought the rainbow colors were pretty cool and thought I might use that as a, a little boost of color. Here I'm just cleaning things up to make it easier to collage in to see if I want the papers. So cutting off the white parts on the scraps, recycling those, nothing too, <laughs> nothing too difficult. Just, I just never take the time to do it. Um, it's fun also to revisit your old paper because some of these I've made, you know, a year or two ago and it's fun to remember it. And at a certain point I should probably start maybe passing these on to other people because at a certain point, if I've passed over something for two years, I, you know, what are the chances I'm actually going to use it? I don't know, but certainly not my, uh, either they're my most interesting things that I don't want to cut up, which also happens, or they're my pieces that I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool, but I'm not sure what to use it for. So it ends up just sitting there and I don't do anything with it. When I went through this pile this time, after I'd gathered things, you can see along that top row, I've, those, that's all the, the, um, kind of full pages that I have at my disposal and the pieces at the bottom are all of the partial pieces that I can easily collage in. Putting some paper behind my pages just so I don't glue my entire sketchbook shut. And I just really wanted to take time and do an old fashioned collage. I'm just using a grid here. So I'm just using square and rectangle pieces and letting the papers shine versus any elaborate shapes that I'm cutting out. And I knew I wanted to make these to go together as I usually do with these, you know, my kind of centerfold collage diptychs. Um, they don't need to be overly matchy matchy, but I wanted them to at least relate. So I'm planning to use similar papers in each of them. And I'm really, you know, picking out pieces that are different looking. So if I have circle shapes, I want to make sure that any other circle shapes I add are different sizes, at least. So there's a difference in scale. Some of the lines that I have in those red or yellow and orange pieces, that was dental floss <laughs> on the jelly plate. Um, I like how those lines work together. And this is just some homemade um, patterns that I use on the jelly plate as well for those black and white orb shapes. And again, I have no great plans in mind. I'm just moving these papers around to see what I like together. And I move them around a lot. There's something about when it feels good, you just kind of know. Um, so I do trust that a lot. 
There are definitely times also when you feel like nothing feels right. And at that point, I ultimately just say, okay, I'm going to stick something on the paper, glue something down and work from there. It's so much easier to work around something and react to something on the paper than to always have indefinite, you know, combinations at your disposal that you're not really sure what you ever want to do and you never glue anything down. So it's always easier to, well, I guess always is, is a tricky word, but it's almost always easier to react to something that's, that's a fixed constant. So if you have a favorite piece of paper, go ahead and glue that one down if you know you want to use it or you think you want to use it and then let that inform every other choice you make. So at this point, I've settled in to my color scheme, which is this white, black, and yellow slash orange slash red, right? I'm using lots of warm colors. And then I found these Celadon stripes again. And I don't know what it is about Celadon and red, but I really enjoy that color combination. I think it's just enough green that it plays with the red well as a compliment but also it's a nice, quiet, cool, chill vibe. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but it's very calming to me. So I've, I've made my commitment now <laughs> to some of these pages. I've got two down. For this, I'm using um, the Nova gel, so it's a heavier gel, because I'm using bigger scraps of paper. And this paper's thicker. So this paper, the collage paper I'm using is 80 pound paper. I should make life easier on myself and make it with 50 pound paper, but I don't. I don't know why. I just keep using the 80 pound paper. Anyway, this helps it um, keep it from wrinkling. It'll still warp a bit, but if it's in my sketchbook and I, you know, close the sketchbook and put some weight on it, it comes out pretty, pretty flat. But you will notice as it dries, it'll mm, buckle. Maybe that's the word. You know how it is. You get something wet and then it dries and it dries a little strange, but it'll flatten out nicely. So at this point, I'm really not sure about those green stripes on the left. I decided I was just going to do it. So I did it, but I wasn't convinced that that was what, what life was going <laughs> to, what I was going to like at the end. I really wanted to get that script in where I wrote with a giant black marker. So I kept trying it, however. And again, I wanted to make these related but not identical. So that little scrap that has blue and green on it toward the middle on the left side on the left page definitely is not something that's on the right side, but it needed a little something extra. And this is the first tissue paper piece I'm exploring. Everything else has been on 80 pound paper. I like to use the tissue paper over things rather than just by itself. That's the strength for me of the tissue paper collage. And I found my tiny circles. So I decided that I would try that. And what I liked about these is it kind of bridged the gap between the dark, you know, black and white kind of stark pattern on the bottom and brought it up, but brought it up in a lighter way with the small circles. I was thinking that I might put some small circles on the other page as well. Again, just to tie those two together more. And I liked how they turned out. So after trying it just about everywhere, I settled right there. And one of the things I was noticing is that the picture on the right is less busy than the picture on the left. And I think, 
I mean, there's just a lot going on on the left. The pieces are bigger. There are fewer pieces on the right. The pieces are larger for the most part on the right. On the left side, I have a lot of those small circles over the stripes, which it felt like a lot. <laughs> so while I was trying to figure that out, I found this little squiggle. And I like that addition. Because again, it's something that's very different. I don't have anything that looks like that in that collage yet. I'm trying to find some ways to quiet down some of the busyness on the left side. Thought about squiggles, didn't feel good. Ultimately, I settled on some white paint. So I'm scraping the bottom of my titanium white, heavy body titanium white, and filling in the background of this tissue paper to block out the stripes and anything else that's showing through. Also, as part of the tissue paper, there's some, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of like the background that comes up on the jelly plate, just some little speckles of, of black. I'm not sure how I feel about the white paint still, but at least it did something different, so it pops a bit. This is a very cool white, so I may go over it with a um, warmer, creamier white. However, it was something to do. And I have so little of that paint jar left, it was nice to get to use some of it. So this is where it ended up. I'm really happy with these. It didn't take me all that long, probably about an hour. And it was a fun, sunny project. So let me know what you guys think. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you watch more of my videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.